All right, all right. Praise the Lord and let the church say amen. I hope and pray that everybody is doing well, for it is another beautiful and blessed day as I give God all the honor, all the glory, and definitely all the praise. Um, Lady D, coming back, responding back with you again. I love your comment and PP drawings. Um, it made me go back to the parables in the Bible because I made a um, statement in my last video that a lot of people get confused on the word because when Jesus said certain things he only was speaking to the Jews and you got people trying to teach and they seem to forget that and try to make you do this and do that and when it, when he was talking to the Jews and there was a difference when Paul was talking to the Gentiles so Jews Gentiles and I thought about the parables and I thought about your comment uh, PP drawings about the disciples and you made me laugh man because I thought about Sanford and Son uh, I know you know that old show man Red Fox and he had the son named Lamont. And he would always tell Lamont, you big dummy. It seemed like Lamont just didn't understand a lot of things that Fred was telling him. And that's the same way I look at the disciples with Jesus because they was right there. Like you said, he always told them things ahead of time. Let them know what was going to happen, how this was going to be. And they still just scratching their head. And I believe Jesus sitting back was saying sometimes, you big dummies. Y'all done told y'all everything. Y'all just ain't getting it. So the title of this video is Why Did Jesus Teach in Parables? Real talk video. Why did Jesus teach in parables? And I thought about this when I thought about your uh, comment earlier, Lady D. And we all know about a parable. You know, beautiful parables. The way Jesus taught was awesome. And it's like a pretty much when he used them, it was like an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And... The Lord used so many parables. He illustrated and profound divine truth. He used stories that could be easily remembered. And this is another reason I learned the word of God because those parables taught me a lot. And that's why I always say when you see parables, you know they was dealing with Israel. And um, he always pretty much came back and explained what the parables meant. And see back then parables was a common form of teaching in Judaism if you know anything about that. And that was a certain part in his ministry, Jesus, he used so many analogies, man, using common things that would be familiar. Let's look at things like salt, bread, uh, sheep, etc., etc. And their meaning was, the meanings was just plain and clear. And, and, and his teaching was just awesome. And sometimes people try to make things harder than what they is. If you would just take the word of God for what it says, and you know, when people get trying to caught up and well, it didn't mean that, it didn't mean this, it, you know, I, I know more than you, that's where you make your mistake at. And the question was again, why would Jesus teach in parables? And then the other question is, why would Jesus let so many people wonder about the meaning of the parables? And it seemed like he only told the disciples. Well, he answered that, didn't he? And uh, Big Rob, you asked me the same question. Well, it's right there in the Word of God, and I'm just doing this real talk video, but I'll come back with those scriptures. But anytime he told that parable, he came back and interpreted. The Bible interpreted itself. And matter of fact, um, I, I was thinking about the parable of the seed and the soil. And before he interpreted that parable, he already drew his disciples away from the crowd. Remember, he took the disciples away. Why? And then, you remember, they asked him, I like, I like to say it like this when they asked Jesus, Master, why do, you speak in them, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered them. He told the disciples, to you, it's been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. He said, but to them, it has not been granted. For whoever has to him, more shall be given. And he, he will have an abundance. But whomsoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. So therefore, Jesus said, therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see. And while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And um, when you think about Isaiah, they talked about that. And it's people right now, they, they, they got 20-20 vision, but they spiritually blind. They can hear, but they spiritually deaf. And Jesus had to teach in that way. Let's take, for instance, JT go on a block on the corner. And here it is, man, three or four men, you know, lost. They, they, they don't know nothing about God. They, you know, they, 
They ain't never went to church a day in their life. The people that raised them never taught them nothing. What good is it me to go up there with a Bible in my hand and start quoting scriptures? So I'm going to make a parable also. And I might see a dope dealer or a prostitute. And I might see the prostitute lady and say, how you doing, sister? You are still a queen. And I'll just start, you know, opening up a conversation just like Jesus did at the well with the, uh, with the woman, the Samaritan woman. And I might say, have you ever heard about salvation? She might come back and say, what is that? So you'd be shocked how many people haven't heard about God. And I'll say, well, it was one. I'll make up my own story and say it was once a woman, probably around your same age, sister. You know, she was having a hard time in life. She, she was brought up rough, you know. She never had a father. She couldn't find love nowhere. And all she found was love in the streets. But one day, something hit her. Some dramatic happened, but then something hit her, and she fell to her knees and cried out. And all of a sudden, she heard this voice. And the voice said, I'm your father, and I can deliver you. I can change you. I can take your, your misery and turn it into a ministry. Do you believe I can do it? And from that day on, she was changed. She accepted the Lord Jesus Savior and in her heart and Ever since then, she lived for God now. So I would do something like that instead of going up on the corner with a Bible in my hand saying, you know what, you're a prostitute, you're going to hell. You out here committing all these sexual acts, that ain't how Jesus did it. So sometimes people don't understand what the King James Bible means, what these words mean. So when you look at Jesus, when he spoke in those parables, he explained them only to his disciples. And you know another reason why? Because those... You had those out there, they just kept on rejecting his message. And they was left in spiritual blindness to wonder, what did Jesus mean? But he made it clear. He made a clear distinction between those who had given ears to her and those who just pretty much cut him off. His own cut him off. That's why in the book of Revelation, you hear him say, him that have an ear, let them hear. Him that have an ear, let them hear. See, when you... um. Is that 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy 3 and 7. Godlessness in the last days. Well, he says, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. It's a lot of preachers like that. It's a lot of people who claim to follow God and they lost. They won't even study. It, I mean, John talks about the work of the Holy Spirit also in John 16 and 13 it says when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come and that's one of my favorite scriptures because that's what changed me changed my thinking i had to study for myself i had to get an understanding of what the word mean and stop listening to everybody else. That's why my favorite, one of my other favorite parables is let the let the weeks and the tiles grow together. Because at harvest time, he will do the separating. I didn't knew, I didn't know what that meant at first, but when I started getting into it, you got to study to start learning. And when I started looking at it, I said, Oh, I get it. Because I said, Lord, show me what that means. And after that, the parables start making sense. I always tell people when you learn these, these symbols, these parables, dealing with when you think about what was said to Israel, Israel, God's chosen the word of God to make a whole lot of sense than somebody just trying to open up and just fast forward to some, some book in the Bible. So when you think about these parables, I mean, it's beautiful. It was a beautiful way he talked to me. So when he's spoken those parables, it's people right now, they got a genuine hunger for God. They really want to know. And the parable is, is an effective way to me to teach. Our Lord's parables, man, contain great volumes of truth and in just a very few words. He didn't need many words. I mean, think about the, the parable, or some might say it's not a parable of the rich man and Lazarus. He couldn't have made that no clearer. Came a time when the beggar died, which was Lazarus, and the rich man died. One went to paradise, and the other one lifted up his eyes and was in Hades, wishing he could get to par paradise. The way Jesus taught, I mean, beautiful. So with that being said, I hope this can make sense to you. Um, and Lady D, I love 
love those comments. That's why I say I don't just stop at one scripture. I try my best to rightly divide the word. And remember, when Jesus spoke, it was always crowds around him. The best sermon to me was the, the Sermon on the Mount, when he laid out so much in the Sermon on the Mount. That's another reason why I explained the four Gospels also. This video will make even more sense to you. If you go back to the one I did about the four Gospels and why did they see something different? Why did Matthew focus on more of the Pharisees? Why did John see this? So on and so on. They told the story their own way, but they all got down to a business about crucifixion, what they did to Jesus. And that's why I always say, if you, you want to even see something about those Pharisees, boy, go back to the book of Matthew, the four Gospels. And remember, uh, they had different crowds around them. So this is why I tell preachers when they get in the pulpit, you, you got to be careful when you're in the pulpit trying to condemn people. If a homosexual walk in, you change your sermon just to hit that homosexual. Well, what if that was the day that homosexual was coming in to get delivered, trying to get changed, and you change your sermon. I see this happen all the time, and you preach on them. And then you got churches that allow all sin to just take place in the church. They, they are lukewarm church. They lukewarm. They remind you of the Lel Seedigan church in Revelation. The one that was just jacked all the way up. Any and everything went on in there. If you ever have time, study those seven churches in Revelation and see which kind of church you got. So with that being said, y'all, have a beautiful, blessed day. I hope and pray all is well with everybody. And what ain't going right, don't sit up and worry about it. Pray and move on. Peace and remain blessed.